Hey everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you are thinking about getting into IT, this is probably the best possible video that you could watch on YouTube. And if you know of a better video on this topic, please link it in the description. I definitely want to see it. And if you're watching this wondering why I have two beds in the background, it's just because I'm recording this in an Airbnb and it just happens to be set up like this. And I just want to say before we get started, if you're interested, follow me on Instagram. I post food polls there daily where I kind of post pictures of what I'm eating and I ask if you think it's worth the price I paid for it. Pretty interesting. It's pretty fun for me and I'm traveling quite a bit recently so you might see some interesting food on there. So jumping right into things, I actually partnered up with Course Careers and created a really really nice course for getting into IT and everything we talk about in this video we go like super super in depth in that course. So after you watch this video and you still feel like you want to work in IT, I'll put a link in the description for the free introductory course from Course Careers. It's just kind of an expanded version of what you're watching right now. How to go about working in IT. So basically the confusing thing is there's not really any legal requirements for working in IT. It's for the most part like unregulated. So basically like anyone off the street can just kind of like walk in and you know technically right be like a senior system engineer for like t-mobile or some big company there's like no legal requirements whereas for example in like the medical industry or like to be like a lawyer or something like this an architect or some kind of civil engineer there's usually some kind of like education or license requirement or something like this but with it there's not really any of that it really just depends on like who's actually reviewing your application at the time so in order to ensure that you're highly employable for a broad range of different employers i kind of came up with these 12 personal stats. You can kind of think of these as your personal stats as if you're in some kind of video game or something. And I know looking at this initially, it might look like kind of a lot to deal with, maybe even slightly intimidating, but I promise it's really not that bad. And I'll go ahead and break down all the stats and kind of the different levels of each one. I'll just dive in, explain consistency, and I'll just kind of quickly work my way through these. The course careers course essentially handholds you and like helps you raise all of these in the most efficient way. So as I kind of work through them, I'll explain maybe like what, what you could do to raise them on your own. And then I'll kind of talk about what course careers does to kind of help you raise each step if it's applicable so basically consistency is you know as you might imagine how consistent you are throughout the whole process like how consistent you are throughout your study like how consistent you are through like trying to raise your stats and then once you're kind of ready to start applying for jobs, like how consistent and efficient you are with your application method. Like, do you apply to like one job like randomly, like every couple of days, or do you methodically do like five per day, five per day, five per day? Like how consistent are you overall? And I kind of define consistency tier, like S tier means like you have no zero days at all. So you at least do something like every single day toward your goal. And that's like really important, right? This seems like really easy and kind of like duh but it's like one of those things that's like really important and it's also like really easy to kind of just commit yourself to and like kind of do it essentially as opposed to like going out and getting like a, a phd or something crazy like this right it's just something you decide on your own and then job application execution this kind of defines how you go about applying to jobs once you're ready to do that like do you consistently do like x number per day like two per day three per day do you use a job application template to kind of keep track of everything you're doing which is something we provide in the course so consistency i'll kind of mark these um these are pretty relatively easy to raise like consistency job application execution depends on how much time you have s tier might take a couple hours a day a tier maybe take like an hour and a half per day or something hopping right into self-presentation this just means like you don't have to look like you know ryan reynolds or something it's just essentially trying to be like the best version of yourself that you can be i kind of define this as you know d tier means you're just like dirty and you're not wearing appropriate attire to your zoom interview or something like this c tier clean yet inappropriate attire like this would be c tier right for an interview b tier maybe you're wearing like a collar shirt but it's like not tailored which is like not a big deal getting into it so you know, I might recommend B tier for getting into IT. Written communication, this is one of those things that can make or break you. Like when you're actually applying to jobs, you just need to make sure your resume is like proper, which is a pillar in and of itself. And then when you're doing like correspondence with any hiring managers, you know, obviously you need to use those third party tools like they're free, right? Like Google Docs or something like this to check your your correspondence. So I kind of just define these. You can kind of read these on your own um, resume quality. Basically, resume quality is not necessarily like what's on your resume. Like I, I have a bachelor's degree. I have all this experience. By resume quality, I mean like the actual like document itself. Like, is it put together properly? Is it easily readable by ATS, like application tracking systems, like the automated resume scanners? 
Is it easily readable and digestible by humans? Like how well is it put together? And Course Careers kind of has a, a whole module that really like walks through like how to put your resume together and there's like a resume template and everything. My channel also has a playlist on this. Um, the Course Careers one's slightly more refined because I just did it recently, but that's resume quality. Just make sure it's like squared away as possible. Yeah, written communication, I'd recommend shooting for like A tier, for instance. Resume quality, I'd recommend, you know, shooting for A tier. Uh, portfolio quality, portfolio is something a lot of people don't even have right so i would recommend like making a a nice pretty decent portfolio you can kind of see the how i defined d tier through s tier on the screen here um i would i would recommend if you have time and you have like a camera i would recommend shooting for like s tier portfolio quality that's just essentially like doing a project and then kind of walking through the project and, and showing it and like essentially putting that on a GitHub and then putting it on your resume. I have a few videos about this on my channel. We go through this really, really in depth in course careers. So that's something to, to be aware of. Experience. So one does not simply go out and get experience, right? So I kind of defined experience D tier. You, you just never worked any job at all. You don't have any experience. C tier, maybe you don't have any experience in IT yet or help desk, but you're able to actually convey that on your resume through like some kind of projects or like personal hobbies or something like that. Cause that, that for sure counts as experience. Like imagine somebody who sits in their mom's basement all day, right? But they're like a super hacker, they're like super, super good at finding bugs. That that 100% counts as experience, right? And you can kind of replicate that through personal projects. And social network, this is just basically either like your social presence online or if you know like a lot of influential people, for example. Like if you imagine like all of your other stats and pillars are like zero, but you, you're you like best friends with Bill Gates or, or, or something like this, right? You're probably like pretty well set up. Um, so this is one of those things that's like not required to get a job, but it certainly can help, right? So I kind of defined C tier as like, you know, having a fully filled out LinkedIn, like all your projects on there, any work experience that you might have, and maybe filling out like an Indeed profile or something like this it, the best you can. So just be cognizant of that. You know, I would recommend doing that. It's one of those things that you don't need, but it it will help just like everything helps a little bit. Uh, next is your interview skill. The way I kind of define this D to D tier through S tier is like really specific to course careers. Like basically the whole idea with ramping up your interview skill, you just want to get a pool of questions for that's in the industry where you want to work. So for example, you're trying to break into IT, maybe help desk, you want to gather up a maybe like 20, 25 to 50 help desk questions. And you don't even need like another person to interview you I would recommend and this is what I do and it's been really useful I like, get the interview questions and then kind of read the questions and then maybe go on a walk or something and practice like speaking and articulating answers to the questions I'm um, doing this like not only will you learn stuff by looking up answers to the questions you'll be able to practice articulating yourself so that when the time comes when you're sitting in front of the hiring manager or whoever it is it's really easy for you to to answer any questions that they they might ask even if it's something that you you don't know the answer to you will have practiced maybe answering questions that you don't really know the answer to like for example like oh i haven't worked with this but i've worked with this thing which is really really similar or i haven't worked with that yet it's definitely on my list of things to do but i have done this something like that it's just really good to practice articulating answers to interview questions and in course careers we, we do have like 50 interview questions and answers like 25 behavioral, 25 technical, and I, I ask and answer them like in video as if I were like kind of in, a, in an interview myself. It's unscripted and pretty useful. I'd recommend, to be honest, I'd, I'd recommend shooting for, for S tier if you're just going by yourself. It's not that big of a deal. Seems like 50 is a lot, but you know, it will really, really pay off in the end. And getting right into technical ability, this is another one of those things where I kind of defined it specifically really related to course careers because we have a whole bunch of different labs, but essentially it's just picking something to learn and practicing it like many, many times. So for instance, an example of a, a lab or some kind of practice you might do. Course careers, we have a lab where we kind of set up a whole ticketing system in Azure because you use ticketing systems like all over IT and like, like help desk. It's the way that you you know, track problems and like resolve issues for users. So basically we set up this like ticketing system from scratch and we implement like the SLA and like everything and we create some mock tickets and then pretend like we're working them. So you might do something like that or, you know, maybe some other practice with Active Directory or find some kind of tutorial on YouTube or something that's relevant to the job you want to do and just practice it like many, many, many times until you're almost able to just do it from memory almost. That's kind of a good thing to shoot for. Basically the way I defined ST here in this is if you're like a course career student for instance 
Um, I would recommend doing all the labs like many, many times until you're able to almost implement them off the top of your head. Certification is another thing that some employers kind of care about. Not everybody cares about it. And obviously you don't need certs to get a job, but to be employable to like a wide range of employers, it might be good to kind of think about it a little bit. So the way I kind of defined D tier through S tier for these, like D tier is like no certifications. C tier might be getting, you know, a cert that's kind of new or it's useful, but it's like not well known. For instance, like maybe Google IT support certification is, is really affordable and it's like really, really good, but it's not quite as well known as CompTIA yet, for instance. And I defined S tier as like a bunch, like three CompTIA certs and like one other like technology or industry specific certification. It's not something you have to do, but you know, I might think about it. And then education, I put education in quotes because I just mean um, like the traditional education in the sense like an associate's degree, bachelor's, master's, etc. And again, it's not something that's like super, you super need, right? But it's just one of those things that you need to think about. And if you're one of those people who have like a resume and there's like literally nothing in your education section, I might recommend, you know, taking a course like a free edX course or something that you can throw it in there or even like, you know, Coursera course or like the course careers course would be better to be honest because that's like super super efficient way to get a job but that's just something to kind of be aware of and think about so once you've raised your personal stats up to a sufficient level it's literally only a numbers game and only a matter of time before you actually get hired for your first job and to really drive this point home we're going to do like a little statistics experiment here so basically for this experiment, let's just assume that you have a 1% chance of getting hired for every application you submit. So 1% chance of getting hired right here essentially means a 99% chance of not getting hired for any particular application that you submit. Basically, the way this chart is set up, it just shows your chances of a hire and a no hire for how many like consecutive applications were submitted. So for example, it's easy to think about the first application, submit one application, your chance of no hire is 99%, your chance of hire is 1%. And then the more more applications you submit and the more consecutive no's that you get statistically speaking it's be it becomes less and less likely for you to receive the next no and it becomes more and more likely for you to receive the next yes if that makes sense i know it's a little bit confusing but I'll, I'll give you a good example that will make everything make sense so basically like what this chart is saying uh, i'll show you this in a second is for instance if you submit you know 25 good applications on the 25th submission assuming all the previous ones were no's, you have a 77% chance of receiving another no, but your chance of receiving yes is statistically speaking 22.22%. And if we scroll down, you know, you submit 100 applications in a row. And for some reason, yeah, you got 99 no's in a row. There's only a 36% chance that your 100th application will be a no and a 63% chance that your 100th application will be a yes. And if we scroll down more and more and more, for example, you know, you submit 200 applications, you submit 100 and 99 uh, it's there's like a 13.4% chance your or your 200th will be a no and an 86% chance your 200th will be a yes and, and assuming that you do five applications per day that's only 40 days right and no doubt you're probably going to get a job before this because like you know once you start hitting like 50% right it's it becomes kind of like unlikely for you to keep submitting applications and then not getting hired subsequently and this this graph here is just essentially like a visualization of what we're seeing is of what we're seeing here. This is, again, this is assuming in our kind of like made up scenario that every application is like a 1% chance to get hired. You can see it kind of flat lines out here, like the closer and closer we get to, to 300. And then statistically and like mathematically speaking in our scenario, you're never gonna be over like 99%, but you can kind of see it crosses the 50% threshold at about 72 applications, which is about, um, that's about two weeks, right? So to kind of drive this statistics thing home and like really help you imagine like what exactly I'm talking about. Imagine that you have a taser, right? The, the thing that you, you pull the trigger and it like shoots electric darts into like, you know, a person or whatever. Assuming, assume you have a taser and, but it only has a 1% chance of shooting, only has a 1% chance of shooting and at any given time. So pull the trigger 99 times, only 1% chance of suit shooting. Like how comfortable would you be to take the taser and like point it at your chest every day and squeeze the trigger like five times? No one's going to do this, right? Because the 1% chance is like pretty high, right? Especially when you're squeezing it five times per day. No doubt after like a couple of weeks, like maybe three weeks max, 
max, you're going to shock yourself in the chest and it's going to suck. Pretty much the same with job hunting, except for instead of like a taser and like, you know, pointing at yourself, you're just submitting applications. Like no doubt if you have like a squared away portfolio and resume and everything, and you're properly submitting five applications per day, no doubt you're going to get hired sooner rather than later for sure. For certain how comfortable would you be squeezing that taser assuming you know you did that for like a year in a row how many times do you think you would get shocked probably a lot right same thing with job hunting assuming like everything is squared away your resume is good it's really unlikely you're going to go without getting hired if you're properly submitting five applications per day so again square away your pillars as much as you can and then be consistent with your job level with your job application and your your congratulations you now work in it yeah i know this video is kind of long but in my opinion this is the best way to go about breaking into IT and for sure the methodology we talked about here is probably like applicable to you know a lot more industries than IT so that's something to kind of think about but I will put a link in the description for the course if you're interested in that you know signing up for the free course again it's kind of an expanded version of this follow me on Instagram and I will see you in the next video bye bye